Uh, hey guys, what's going on? It's me, the Meteor Raptor, and... Well, I've been kind of excited about the Batman vs. Superman film coming out next year. And, really, this review has nothing to do with that, but... Me and my friend Adam here, we're gonna review The Dark Knight. So, yeah, Adam, what were your thoughts on this movie? Um, okay, well, to start off, like... I saw this movie opening night when it came out. And oh, lucky you. Yeah, so we stood in line for a long time, and like anticipations were high on this movie. Um, and I thought, they, I thought that overall it was a good thing. Of the three, it's the strongest Batman film. Um, yeah. I really like Dark Batman Begins. Uh, I have no time for The Dark Knight Rises. Really? Oh, man. We can get into that later if you want, but like that, oh, the phone's ringing. Okay. Is that a thing we need to do? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I should probably deal with that. <laughs> you go deal with that, and we'll come back and get the Yeah, hang on, you keep talking about the film, I'll be right back. I sure seem to talk about this film without you here. Just give me ten seconds, okay? Let's I'm just going to give him... He's going to tell his phone to literally shut up. So, um, while he's gone, I'll talk not about the film, but about these cardboard covers that films come in. Uh, they're like my favorite thing in the world. I think they really class up a DVD. Uh, my wife hates them and throws them out uh, whenever we get one. So <clears throat> if my wife is watching this, stop doing that because they're my favorite thing. Uh, a comment on the bottom if you think cardboard yes or cardboard no. If you as well are a fan of the cardboard sleeve. Um, if that's a thing that you dig. If not, don't even worry about it. Here comes the raptor back. I hate those people who try to sell your things over the phone. I always try and sell them insurance. Really? Like if they call me and they're like, hey, do you, do you want this or that, whatever it is, I'm always like, yeah, I'm interested in that, but who's your insurance carrier? And what uh, do you have for, like, and I just try and sell them insurance? And then they it wasn't even one of those people. I just hate those people in general just as a random topic of discussion. So they, <laughs> they weren't even on the phone? No. You were just like, <laughs> yeah, that's my dad. <laughs> you know who I hate? <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. Okay, back to the Dark Knight. Uh, right, back to the Dark Knight. So again, yeah. I said uh, I think it's the strongest of the three Nolan Bat films. Again, I really yeah. have no time for uh, the Dark Knight Rises, <laughs> which we talked about. I really that movie just made me angry wow. watching it. Yeah, a lot. I just want to say I found this thing actually for five bucks. So maybe this. Uh, yeah, the this two disc. Um, yeah. While you were gone, we talked a little bit about the cardboard sleeve, uh, which I think adds a lot to a DVD. Yeah, I, uh, and I it's really kind of cool, like the second version you get, because they actually, oh, really? I'm not sure if the camera could pick up on it if we held it up, but the Joker's on the cover, like on the Blu-ray, but on the back he's written all over it, and I don't know if that's on the back of the Blu-ray. Uh, I, don't I don't know. I don't know. It's not on my DVD copy. Ah. Uh, Anyhow, I live in the DVD world. Right, so after I bought that, actually, that led to me buying Batman Arkham City, right. which... That pretty much kicked off my interest in Batman. Then when I played this, I thought, yeah, that was really cool, you know, and I'm going to check out more Batman. Which then led to me watching the other two Batman Dark Knight films, even though I could have seen this one in theaters, but I still missed out on that. I don't remember why. And then that led to me reviewing this. And this still stands to this day as one of the best, if not the best, animated film I have ever seen. Second only to Redline, but... That's because the company who made that is like the second crowned king of anime, and anime it's not the same as DC animation, so yeah. You can tell how much he enjoyed that Blu-ray because he didn't throw it on the ground like trash. There it is. So uh, I found the story to be incredibly strong for this. Yeah, no, it, it was. It, there wasn't a whole lot that that wasn't there. Not like that third installment where you could drive just trucks through potholes. <laughs> yeah, that was going there. Um. If I had to pick a beef with Batman The Dark Knight, I think that um, I would have ended the movie 20 minutes earlier. Mm. I would have ended it with the reveal of Two-Face's horribly disfigured face. And then that would have been a, a much stronger third picture. Oh. Okay. If they would have told the Harvey... I just felt that Harvey Dent got screwed over. Like the Two-Face char character kind of got screwed over. Out of Like he's there for like maybe 15 minutes. And, you know, I thought his performance was as strong as the Joker's. Like, the Joker really to stole the Heath show. Heath Ledger won an, act won an Oscar for this, actually. Yeah, no, he was, it was a big deal. Like, he... And I think, like, after coming out of 1989's Batman, where the Joker... Was uh, that the Tim Burton one? Yeah, and he was played by Jack Nicholson. 
And he really just chewed the scenery, and people were like, the joke, what? And then it came out and just kind of blew everybody away. Yeah. Um, after that, like when, I remember when we saw this movie, we all came out. Uh, no, not this one, when we saw the dark Batman Begins. And at the end, Commissioner Gordon has that Joker card. Yeah, and he's like, I want you to check on him. this. This is his calling card. And we came out of the theater, and the discussion for the next week was like, how can somebody be better than Jack Nicholson? How's that going to happen? Hmm. And we were just like, it can't. it can't. You know what I mean? And I had one friend, uh, Jay Grimes, who was like, they should just get him to do it again. They should just get Jack Nicholson to do it. And we all thought he was insane. But the idea of somebody else playing the Joker was kind of foreign. Uh, but you know Heath Ledger stole literally stole the show uh, in this movie, and uh, that was pretty cool. But I thought Harvey Dent was a really strong character, and yeah. I thought that Two Face could could have sustained his own his own movie. And that would have been yeah. a much better part three than that awful dog pile of uh, Dark Knight Rises that mm. we got. Really, really. Before we move on to acting, I just want to say one thing. I really did not find any problems with the writing aside from one scene, and maybe you can explain this to me. Talk to me. It's the scene when um. Joker, he has uh, Harvey Dent, and then whatever her name was. Not, um, not the girl from Dawson's Creek. Not Katie Holmes. Uh, it's like Harvey Dent. It's right before his face gets royally messed up, and they have the helicopters yeah. there, and they have everything timed out. Maggie Gyllenhaal. Exactly. I didn't see Rachel Dawson was a character. Rachel maybe. Dawson, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't see exactly how Joker could have planned out everything. And I've kind of just gone, you know what, it's a superhero movie, it's been so Ooh. realistic, why should I let one tiny thing ruin the entire film what and I just you? ignored it? No man, that was odd, that was just like his thing, was he just planned it all out. I know, it just... I but we're living, we're living in a world where Batman's a thing. So okay. if you're going to accept that Batman's a thing, you got to be able to accept that Joker can plan that, right? Yeah, and he is like just an mm. uncontrollable sociopath and all that, so I guess he could have planned it ahead. You know what my favorite part of this movie was? What? Talking about specific parts. Okay, so there's two boats. Oh yeah, and it's like you have to kill. It's like it's like you have to. One of them has to get blown up. Yeah, and they're then both. At the very end, it's like no, we won't. Right. So there's a boat full of convicts and a boat full of civilians, and the convicts can blow the civilians up, and the civilians can blow the convicts up. I think and the big moment for me in that is when the convict just like throws it out the window. Okay, so like, that's the guy I want to talk about. I know. Do you like, know who that is? No. Okay. <laughs> so that's a guy whose only other acting credit that I'm aware of was in a Hulk Hogan movie called No Holds Barred, where he played a bar, a professional bar fighter, because that was a thing, in this movie called No Holds Barred. If you haven't seen No Holds Barred, watch it, because it's bananas. It was literally a movie to promote Hulk Hogan in his wrestling career, and it's as amazing as it sounds. Okay, I'll probably check it out. And his name was Zeus in that. He became a wrestler for a while, too, huh. but not a good one. So, what were you saying, like... I just love seeing him. I was like, that's Zeus! Like, it took me out of the movie for that moment. That was a bold casting choice. Um, yeah, and I guess that just kind of... Well, just before we go into acting, I just want to say that whole thing with the boats, it almost... like I could kind of picture it if the Joker, he called up Jigsaw from the Saw films. He's like, oh, hey, man, uh, I'm going to take a huge hostage thing, and I need some advice. Um, what should I do? And then he's like, well, that's kind of easy. You see, you should have two boats, and on each one, one to, you have the innocents, and you have the convicts. And you have to ask them, can they put aside their differences to kill one of the others, to, to, to forgive the others, and let both of them free? And then Joker went, oh, I like that, except I don't like the part when they live, so I'll make it so they die. And then Jigsaw's like, well, you know, um, the convicts, they kind of did waste their life, but maybe they can get a second chance, and then... Then Joker's like, no, screw you, I'm out of here, and then just hangs up the phone and does it, you know. I think the Joker... I've seen too many movies. No, that's a not impossible thing. But I think the idea of Joker having Jigsaw's number <laughs> is way more implausible than Joker blowing up um, Maggie Gyllenhaal and Harvey Dent. I don't know. Yeah. Or they could saying. be like following each other on like Instagram or something. He like takes a selfie and he's like, hey Jigsaw, I need your help or something. So you, okay. He takes a selfie with all the convicts. It's like, should I kill them or something? You're suggesting. I just want to play this out. Okay, okay, look. We're just two guys geeking out right here about two franchises that we'll never meet unless you go to fan fiction. I'm just saying, you're suggesting in the world of the Dark Knight, perhaps the Joker has Instagram and Bruce Wayne's not following him? 
Good point. This did come out in 2008, and Instagram came out in 2013. So, so Facebook or MySpace. I don't think the Joker. Oh, imagine he had a MySpace, <laughs> and he had like Joker, Joker sings like it's like his home garage band recordings of like Joker sings punk. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah. I we just got way off topic, so a little bit. You know, there isn't a lot to talk about the acting because I'm just gonna sum it up like this: the acting was fantastic. Disagree. Really? Wow, to me it was. I mean, I thought Gary... Like, I'm just going to list off the ones I can remember. I thought Christopher Nolan was pretty good. Heath Ledger won at... Christopher, Aust- Christopher Nolan, like the director? Oh, Christian Bale, I mean. I keep getting those two mixed up. All right, because uh, I was confused. Yeah, I'm just saying that... Uh, Ledger's won an Oscar for his acting in this. I thought that uh, Gary Oldman played a fantastic uh, Commissioner Gordon. Yeah. But what did you see that was bad in this? Um, okay, so here's... Acting wise, and I don't know if this is an acting thing or a directing thing, but in the Batman Begins, um, Bruce Wayne lowers his voice a little bit when he's Batman. But this movie was where we got the beginning of the let's make fun of Christian Bale because he sounds like an idiot. <laughs> like the Batman voice that we all have made fun of at some point in time. All of us <laughs> have made fun of that at some point in time. Yeah. My wife. Has made fun of that voice at some point in time. Hey, should we be talking about that on YouTube? Yeah, man, my wife is great. Oh. She, she knows that. But okay. what I'm saying is, first off, Christian Bale thought maybe this is a good idea to sound <laughs> this ridiculous. But nobody stopped him. Never once was Christopher Nolan like, "Hey, hey, dude, that voice you're doing, don't, don't do that, don't, don't do that." But so, then again, Zack Snyder did convince him to kill Zod in Man of Steel. Okay, dude, we'll do a Man of Steel another time, because I... I haven't seen that yet. I just heard that somebody was really kind of pissed off that Christopher Nolan actually convinced Zack Snyder... No, the other way around. They, Zack Snyder convinced him to do something. Okay, but I'm just saying... Man of Steel another day. Man of Steel another day, because so I... So, you thought the voices that. got a little bit too ridiculous? Yeah, I just thought it was like... It was almost like he was doing it... And if anybody here has seen the movie Best in Show, Eugene Levy plays a folk musician... And he puts on this like really sticky character voice, and it almost felt like Batman was like borderlining best in show shtick hmm. with that voice. Secondly, okay. I just I didn't really care about Maggie Gyllenhaal in this movie. Rachel Dawes, like she did her thing, and well, I, she dies, so yeah. But I just like I didn't like I don't think she did a great job. I don't think she did a bad job. But I just I didn't. I felt no stake in that character. She was in the movie died. for all of maybe 20 minutes, so I don't really think we lost a lot. I, don't, I think she was in the movie longer than that, because the movie's like eight hours long, right? Like, it is a long That movie. too, just jumping back to writing, I kind of felt like it could have been cut down a little bit. It was, see, this movie, I feel, is the exact opposite superhero movie to the Wolverine. It was X-Men Origins the Wolverine, the first Wolverine movie, because that movie... You mean not this one, because... No, that one's good. I was just watching it this morning. I was watching the extended cut. This, this thing is awesome. Yeah, so that's good. But no, the other one that came before that where it's like really bananas and John Carter of Mars is in it and it's full of continuity errors and it's like just like a bizarre show. Like, what the heck is going on here? But it's only like 85 minutes long, so... I don't really care. I'll just I'll enjoy that. But this is a marathon. You have to like really be prepared to invest a chunk of time into. And don't get me wrong. I love long movies. Man yeah. of Steel. That movie was like I think longer than this, and I love that movie. But the Dark Knight I, Returns. If you watch the deluxe edition, you have to be ready to give up almost two and a half hours. Right. Exactly. But this movie, I felt, I felt like it was a long movie. If that makes any sense? Yeah, you know. I love long movies that don't feel long. I, this movie, I felt like it was a long movie. Even the first time I watched it, I was like, "Is this seriously gonna keep going on?" So, still, there is enough stuff to make up for that. So, now that being said, when I, when I said before about um, Two Face, how they should have ended with his reveal, yeah. and then, like they just did that this summer with Spider Man. Amazing Spider-Man 2. Yeah, they did it with Rhino. It just yeah, ends like, and, and that was like a really cool way to end that movie. And I feel like... they're saying, yeah, we're going to have him. And then they're like, oh, look, we're going to have like seven more sequels because we have all these villains randomly under Oscorp, which they didn't want to explain, but they will in sequels, you know? Yeah, I, but I feel like Sony owes me money because that was my idea for this movie. Oh. I was like, That's what, so I think Sony, if you're watching, send me some money. Me too.
Yeah, it gives him the dunk because. Uh, yeah, that's my real name. My real name is Duncan. Did I just did I just ruin your channel? Because people didn't know your name was Duncan. No. Oh. Yeah, I go by the nickname Raptor a lot though. So you know I, what? I'm gonna start calling him Raptor all the time. Cool. Whatever. Like I've got people calling me Duncan in comments and all that, but you know what? I don't care. It's just. I feel like I. For a split second, I felt super horrible. No! Like, oh, no, what did I do? I was going to turn the table and just run out. And you didn't replace all my hero clicks. I'll do that. I'll do that. Yeah, so no. This, uh, this yeah. is definitely the strong part of the trilogy. I'm happy the trilogy's over because it went to, like, a place that... It went to the place where, like, here's a real-world take on the Dark Knight. And I also felt that as good as these movies were, they weren't really Batman-y. Really? Well, I felt like they kind of, they didn't really get the character of Batman oh. right. Um, and again, maybe maybe it's more more prevalent in the third one, but, like, Batman is not just made up of, you know, the first one where he was, like, a ninja and stuff, and that was really a big thing. That was, that was like, what Batman was about. But the Dark Knight and the Dark Knight Rises kind of go more line of, here's the toys I have to do my job as opposed to me doing my job with the toys behind the scenes. You know what I mean? Speaking of which, like the effects and all the CG and all that are really good. Like Yep. Yeah. So when it comes down to it, uh I can totally recommend The Dark Knight. Uh I don't think many people left in this world haven't seen it. I don't know. Yeah. What what about you? Can no, you no, yeah. This? It's definitely if we're going down to like watch or pass, definitely if you haven't seen it yet, buy it. It's it's good. Yeah. It's like the it, again, it, up to this day it's the probably best Batman live action movie made. It's number 4 of the top 250 IMDb films of all time and yeah, it's no. rated by people. It's pretty it's pretty solid like. It's pretty yeah. solid like. If you haven't seen any of them yet, watch Batman Begins, watch The Dark Knight. And then watch The Dark Knight Returns. Just skip Rises. Yeah, don't watch Rises. If you want to know why we might do a review at that about that at some point. Yeah, we'll definitely I'd love to come back and just yeah. Tear that apart like a raptor. All right. Like that's because that's you. But now, also that being said, talk about the animated ones. I think Batman Under the Red Hood is up there, top animated films. I haven't seen it yet. I'll have to at some point. Yeah, definitely watch that. So yeah, you guys, I can give this. I actually give this thing a solid three and a half raptor claws. I thought it was a really good film. Uh, I'd like to thank Adam for coming out and helping me film this review. No problem. And go check out his YouTube channel. I got a link in the description down there. And until next time, you guys, keep cool, and I will see you guys around.